Hey, hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneur on a Dime. I am Kristen Ostrander. And I'm Amy Fearman, and we're so glad to have you here tonight. We're doing our next episode um, on the internal entrepreneur, and this one is about decision making um, how to improve your business by making the right decisions. And I know this affects any and all entrepreneurs out there. Heck, it even it can affect how you relate to your spouse, how you relate to your kids, making the right decisions. I know a lot of people struggle with really trying to make the right decisions or faced with great decisions and do you choose this one or this one? And so we're just going to run through some of the things that can help you make the best decisions in life and in business and all kinds of stuff. So this principle applies to that all. So we do have something special for you this evening. Um, We've made a little cheat sheet guide kind of thing that goes along with tonight's show. And so we want you to go and download that. It's absolutely free, but we want you to go and download it. So go to mommyincome.com slash decision, and you can download the, the little uh, cheat sheet homework type of thing, because this is a lot of stuff. The last few shows that we've done are very kind of, I don't want to say heavy, but they're, they're just a lot of stuff to think about. And you don't want to just forget about it and have to you know, come back to it later. These are business changing, life changing skills and strategies that we're putting into place for you. And we don't want you to forget them so easily. So we've made this little companion to download for you. So it's just one single sheet and, um, you know, you can use it now, you can download it after the show, however you want it, but um, we're going to go over some of these things. And it's just kind of a little bit of a takeaway for you to sit down and really think about some of the things in your life and how you can take action. Because we sit here every Monday and we give you a show and we pour our, put our best foot forward to try to give you everything that you need to keep continuing in your business. And we want you to take action on that because it does nothing if it goes in through one ear and out the other. Exactly. So it's, you know, print it out now, print it out later, whichever works for you, but save it to somewhere that you can find it because you're going to want to reference it down the road. So let's get started with this because decision making is something that we do every single day in our businesses. It doesn't matter how big or how small the decisions are, um, they are important for your business. It doesn't matter if you're deciding whether or not you should stay home and pack a shipment or go outsourcing or whether or not you need to do your bookkeeping or you need to do something else. Decisions make, decision making large and small affects how you move your business forward. Absolutely. And you know what, believe it or not, if we have some of these things in place, you can start to make decisions based on just some key anchors that you have. And our first thing to think about is core priority. So this is number one, core priority. What is the core priority in your business? What's the core priority in your life? Now let's define that for a minute. Core priority is the thing that you care about the most. Why are you an entrepreneur? Why are you in business? And it's not just to make money, okay? Let's like get that out of the way right now. It's not just, oh, I'm in business to make money. Why? Why is it that you've decided you don't want to go down to Walgreens and work a nine to five or a seven to three or whatever it is that they offer you for a minimum wage? Why, would, why are you choosing entrepreneurship over a day job or maybe moving into entrepreneurship away from your day job? The... the Let's think about what are you passionate about? What is it that makes you get up and do this every single day? You know, is it, you know, there are a number of different reasons why people start a entrepreneurial endeavor, whether it's to earn a little bit of a side income or to get rid of the nine to five. What is that thing that sits on your heart that makes you get out of bed in the morning? Right. What are, and here's a question you can ask yourself. What are the top three things that you can't stop thinking about working on or pursuing? We all honestly will pursue and think about and work on something. So what is that for you? If it's you love your kids so much that you want to be your own boss because you want to be able to go to the dance recitals and the school plays and you want to be the homeroom mom or what, what or you want to be a stay at home dad or you just want a little bit more. Someone mentioned in the chat control. You want that control. Why? You want it because you want to be in control of your own destiny, your own pocketbook, your own hours. And so write that stuff down. This is part of the, the download that we just talked to you about. So you can come back to it later. You can write it down now and then put it on that sheet however you want. But think about these things. I know it's kind of heavy to sit here and think about it right now. So we're going to kind of blast through these. But, you know, this is kind of the stuff we're asking you about later on. What are the top three things that you can't stop thinking about? I can't stop thinking about my kids and how little time I feel like I have left with them because they're teenagers and they're growing and they're changing and they're 
you know, getting lives of their own. And I feel like I only have a few time, few hours with them every day and then they're, you know, doing their own thing. What's most important to you? And let's stop, take it, and we're going to ask you to build goals and make guidelines based on your core priority. This is where the basis, the foundation for your decision making needs to come in. Um, we're building the foundation to make those business decisions, those life decisions easier. The whole point of coming up and determining what your core priority, your why is, is to be able to, when you're looking a decision in the face, know that because of this priority, I look at it this way versus another direction that somebody else might look at it in. Right. So we want to build our goals, our decisions, our dreams, our business on our core priorities and never forget that. Never forget the why. Never forget why you're doing what you're doing. Yes, we want to earn money, and we're going to talk about that next. Because, of course, we're not in business just to do free. We're not in business just to be like, sure, let's give all of our product away. Let's, you know, we just do this 30, 40 hours a week just for fun. No, we want to make profit. And so that's part of why we're doing what we're doing. But there's a reason for that. Why do you want to earn more money? or different money, or the same money, but have more control over your hours. So thinking about all that why. Maybe me, I want to buy a house on the beach. I want to be a snowbird. I am really, really struggling. The sun was out today. I'm very excited about that. We haven't seen the sun in Michigan, I swear, in like three weeks. Um, I can't stand the gray, gloomy. It's not even the cold and snow. We hardly have any of that, but it's gray, overcast, gloomy every day. And I don't have to put up with this for my whole life. So I'm going to be a snowbird. I'm going to fly south through the winter, come back up to beautiful Michigan in the spring and summer and really enjoy the fall. And that's my goal. And I want to be able to bring my kids with me if they want to come or however that looks. And so, um, you know, that's part of what drives me. And guess what that requires? Money. Yeah, unfortunately, we're in a society where we have to make money to be able to have the lifestyle that we want. And we're all different. Um, depending on how much we want to earn, we'll determine what kind of lifestyle we can have. But we don't need to have a lifestyle that isn't the lifestyle we want. We don't all need to live in multi-million dollar mansions. Heck, I don't want to clean that. I don't even want to hire somebody to clean that. I don't want to deal with that much space. <laughs> I would just collect way too much stuff and fill it to the rafters. That's genetics and I'm not going there. <laughs> so let's break it down and look at the money side of things. Okay, we know that we have a foundation, our core priorities. We know we need to make money to be able to spend more time with our kids, to be able to have the dream life that we're looking for, or being able to have that vacation that we're looking for how can we make the decisions to make more money? How do we do that? What does that look like? You know, what it looks like is doing money making tasks first. So when we talk about making decisions in our business, we have this deep seated core priority. That's not always the thing that's always hanging over us every time we make every little decision. That's usually for some of the bigger decisions. But when it comes to the day to day, when you wake up in the morning, when you are, and I hope you are, yeah, that's me being clumsy, filling out your 15 minute hustle chart. Um, and when you're filling this out every day and putting stuff on there, you want to make sure that your money making tasks are first. In other words, what is putting money directly into your pocket? So you have to start thinking about those things. And let me tell you, if you're sourcing or if you're buying product to put on your shelf, that is not the money making task. The actual money making task is sending it into Amazon because it cannot sell when it's sitting next to your computer or still in the trunk of your car or on the shelves or whatever. So the money making task is getting the product to the customer so they can actually buy it. Or if you're not selling on Amazon or eBay and you're not listing, maybe you're selling um, courses or classes or coaching, connecting with your clients, connecting with your customers is what puts money in your pocket. It's not fiddling with email. It's not, you know, doing this or that or making another Instagram meme. It's direct connection. It's calling them up. It's following up with them directly and being personal. So think about those things. What puts direct money in your pocket and make those decisions first. And we all tend to want to do what's easiest to cross off, get it done. But in reality, those are the things that can usually wait till later and be grouped together. Um, the emails that come in or the phone calls that you have to make or whatever, but it's not about doing what's the most fun, which for me, I know is sourcing. Um, even if it's just sourcing through a wholesale catalog, that to me is fun. Um, shipping, 
tape boxes, not so much. Um, we tend to cross off the easy stuff first. Absolutely. And you know what, that's the, pro that's some of the problems that we have. Honestly, we all procrastinate. We all put things off that don't seem like the most fun, but again, you're in business to make money. So let's make that money. Do what directly puts money in your pocket, base your decisions on that. What comes first? If you've got a good decision and an next decision, a, a two really great decisions, and you're just kind of torn, that moves us into our next thing, which is facts and data. Now you guys know Amy is always calling me a data nerd. I am. You know the number one question that I get in the Facebook group or privately and private messages is how do you know your bundles will sell when you put them out there? <sighs> because I do a lot of research. Because I look at facts and data and make decisions based on that. Not just what I think is going to be good or what I hope is going to be good. I do research. Plain and simple, facts and data. I make money because I look at facts and data and I make my decisions based on that. And that goes for any industry. It doesn't matter what you sell or what service you provide or whatever. It doesn't matter. That goes across the board. There is information out there that will help you run a better business. Is it that you need to better understand your target audience? How do you do that? How do you connect with them on a better level? You know, what products are currently selling on Amazon? And we're not telling you to go look at the hot products. We taught a whole class, research class on how to look for products. It has nothing to do with looking at the hot product list on Amazon. Absolutely. So when we talk facts and data, no matter what your industry, now you guys know we're Amazon FBA sellers. And so that's our number one industry that we sell and do business. So when you're stocking your stores for inventory, you base it on data and history and trends. And this is all free and paid information that you can get. All the free sites, Keeple, Keeple, Keepa, Camel, 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 so the Amazon seller browser, all these different things can give you free information. Google Trends will tell you what's trending in different industries. These are all free resources that you can look up different products. You actually have to have a head on your shoulders and you actually have to think, I'm going to sell products. What category do I know most about that I can start in that I'm not restricted or not you know, ungated or whatever it is. A lot of people look at what they can't sell, focus on what you can sell, and then start there and start doing some research. Um, also, look at what's done well in the past. Guess what? There are professionals out there that have been doing this a long time. Yeah, okay, I just bragged about that for a minute. <laughs> we are actually professionals that have been doing this a long time. I've been selling on Amazon for nine and a half years. That's a long time. So, you know, what has done well in the past is not just based on what's here. Look at all the data that's out there. Also, look at other platforms. If you are a mega Amazon seller, look at what's selling on eBay. Look at what's selling on Walmart. Look at what's selling on other platforms. Even things like Let Go and Offer Up and what are these things that people are starting to sell? What is becoming popular? Ask teenagers. Honestly, there are future buyers and we, my daughter just got her, she's 13. She just got her first bank account because she works for us and we pay her cash and it's easy to just transfer money from our bank to hers. And she's got her own debit card now. So she has to keep track of all that kind of stuff or whatever. And she goes, mom, can I put my credit card or my debit card on Amazon? Cause I want to buy, I want my own account cause I want to buy this or that. I'm like, dang, you're 13. The, these are the future. These kids are not going to go to stores. I'm telling you, they're just going to, I mean, they still kind of like to go to stores and stuff, but still, if I tell her, Hey, you can get that cheaper on Amazon. She's all like, where, where can I buy it? You know, cause you know, they don't earn a lot of money. So thinking about what sells on other platforms really well. It's all about sitting down and thinking where you can find the data that you need to make your best decisions for your business um, and understanding where you can search for trends. My husband's business, most of their world, I mean, the Amazon world is based on Facebook um, as far as networking with other sellers, but my husband's world is all based on Twitter. You can get amazing trends. Say, for example, you're doing merch by Amazon, which is t-shirt design. Go on Twitter to see what the heck people are talking the most about and design a t-shirt based on it. That type of information is going to help grow your business. So paying attention to where you can get the facts and data for your specific business or industry is going to be relevant. There's tons of forums out there or other platforms where you can find information. 
let me tell you right now, the key to business growth, no matter what industry you're in, whether you sell on eBay on the side hustle, whether you're a multi-million dollar Amazon seller, whether you're a network marketer, whether you're an affiliate link person, it's all about facts and data and research. It doesn't just fall into your lap and you get this magic formula that's like, woohoo, I just, you know, arrived suddenly. If that were the case, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> so you are the, the few, the proud, the Marines, just kidding. Um, you are the few and the proud and the smart ones that are paying attention because you want to grow your business. And it's all about the research. If you do nothing else, you put that money in your pocket first, the stuff you bought like yesterday or last week and sell it and send it. And then spend your time researching more product, researching a niche, just 15 minute hustles every day. If you can just little bits and bits, gather information. As a matter of fact, you guys, just so you know, I'm doing this because, okay, just so you know, I don't know how to say that in a not nice way, whatever. I'm not just talking out of my ass. That's what my husband says all the time. I don't know how to say that another way, but this is like my 15 minute hustle today research. We don't just say this stuff. You guys, we do this stuff. We live this stuff. This is my research right next to me. I have about 20 wholesale catalogs that every day at a certain time I look there and I fish through and I see, Oh my gosh, I really like that product. Let me do some research on it. Not just, I like that product and I think it's nice. I'm going to say, is it trending? Is it out there? Is it the thing? Um, I can tell you what I just sent in a bundle. Amy and I actually just sent in a bundle together. We're kind of working together on a lot of bundles to save time and work and do that. You guys connect with other people. Two heads are better than one head. You can do it. We work together now. We used to have just separate Amazon businesses and we still do, but we work a lot together. Why? Because it's easier. You do this section, I'll do this section and we just come together and meet in the middle. It's so fabulous. If you have not done that and tried to connect with another seller to try to split the work in half, we each make our own money. Our accounts are completely separate, but we're sending in some of the same stuff because it's, it's a uh, saving time as far as research, as far as list building, listings and, and pictures and all that. Um, it's, it's fabulous. It is fabulous. Um, and that is something that build trust and you can have that too. That's a decision to make for your business. No, that's not something that Kristen and I jumped into lightly. That's something we worked together and determined that that would be something that would work for both of us. That was a decision that we both had to make. We based those decision on facts and data. <laughs> And it's sometimes like, that data has nothing to do with what you're pulling from a, a, a bunch of numbers on a piece of paper. Sometimes it goes with your gut and having conversations with people. Absolutely. And just seeing, you know, conversation with anybody. I know Sharon is here listening. We love Sharon. She's a faithful listener and watcher. We met her in person. And she's so fabulous. Um, her daughter plays softball. So she knows all a ton of stuff about softball for um, you know, young ladies, girls softball. And those are conversations that she has with other parents. I'm sure that there's so many products. I know nothing about softball except for my husband's a pitcher in church, church league softball. And I root for him and the church team and that's all. Um, but as far as like some of the ins and outs of the equipment and the brands and the things that they use um, on the side to kind of do all that is um, a niche that she might know more about that some of us don't know about. So she can talk to different conversations. She can sit there and talk to other moms, other parents, other dads, the coaches and see what's hot, what's trending, what, what are the colors this year, what are this, what are that, a birthday party for your toddler, you can get to know some of the stuff that's out there and that what's So going. this is interesting because one of my biggest lines now came because of a conversation I had at my son's, one of my son's friend's birthday parties. And we happened to be taught, the moms were talking about what we all did. And one happened to say, I work for XYZ company. And I was like, wait, you do what? You sell wholesale? Let's have a conversation outside of this birthday party because I want to get into what you're selling. And based on that, I've now been working with her for over a year now. And that just having those conversations and listening and feeding your knowledge bank. And it may not be something you're ready to act on now, but we are, you're going to be able to make those connections and it might be something you want to act on in the future. But you're building your knowledge bank by having conversations. I used to love... When I worked at Old Navy, I used to like be stocking the shelves and I'd hear a conversation going on over here. And I'd be like, oh, we have this, this, and this. And then I'd help them with their sale and I'd sell them a credit card at the end of it. So it was all part of listening to what their needs were, helping them meet their needs and be able to make the sale afterwards. 
We call that ear hustling around here when you're listening <laughs> in to somebody else's conversation. It's like an ear hustle. You're like over here and you're like, hey, what are they talking about? You're like leaning in. Pretty sure you're falling off your chair because you're trying to listen to what they're saying in the booth next to you or whatever. Hey, so ear hustle. Now that's what you do. That's how we find out stuff. And I'm actually, you know, because Amy and I never really met a stranger and we definitely are, will butt into your conversation even if we don't know you. I've been there before. I'm like, you know, I hear you have an issue. Let me help you with that. I can't help myself. I do. I never met a stranger. People look at me weird. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's where you get, and that's, that's the, that's the, the next thing too. Like Amy met this wholesaler because of a kid's birthday party. What are the experts in the field saying? Whatever field that you're in, whatever niche that you're in, go find websites that have something to do with that. They might not be Amazon or eBay or, uh, you know, find some of the niches and find out what's new and what's trending and what's out there and, you know, make some bundles of products and put them on there. But I will say, part of decision making has, is staying focused. And we have to help you rein that in because you can go start searching down whatever rabbit trail you want to go down and you could be lost in a black hole in Alice in Wonderland type thing um, and you'll never be found again. So we want to help you be able to make good decisions in a timely manner so you can move forward and not get stuck just spinning and spinning and spinning. Yeah, because, you know, who was here last week? I hope you were here last week. If you missed last week's show, it was off the hook because it applies to everybody. It was about fear and it was about, this is goes hand in hand with that. So last year we talked you down off your ledge and we talked to you about fear and how you can get over fear. That's the number one hindrance in decision-making. So last week we kind of helped you try to get over some of those hurdles. Now this week it's like, now that we know how to deal with our fears and what's stopping us from making the decisions, this is what we're gonna base that on. So right away, we're gonna say, take that fear out of there. Now we're gonna talk about different things that you decision-making in your business. What we can do to practically get this stuff done, okay? So that first thing that we do there is plan, collect, analyze, decide. And this is relatively quick, okay? This is a relatively quick thing. This isn't two hours and two days or two weeks and you're kind of analyzing everything else. That is analysis paralysis. It's plan, collect, analyze, decide. It should be the fat, the more you're in your business, the faster it is to make these decisions. Plan, know the top decisions that you need to make for your business. And you know what I'm gonna say? I bet, can somebody guess what I'm gonna say next? know the decisions you make for your business. What do you need to do? What's your action step? Drum roll. Make a list, okay? Make a list. We say this all the time. List, 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 list. Make a list. Keep a list. Prioritize these tasks, things that have to be done all the time. If you're an Amazon seller or an eBay seller, you need to list, you need to buy product, list product, sell product, ship product. That's definitely like the major four things that you have to be doing. So there's no bookkeeping and you need to do the cleaning of your, there's the list goes on, but we also have to go back to the money making tasks. So when you're going to make decisions about your business and you're going to try to make money to get to the core priorities that the reason you've started this to begin with, you're going to base them on facts and data. You're going to plan, which means making a list. Yes, I know. Even if you're over here going, I'm not a list person. I just got this. Let me in your business. Let me all up in your business. I will look and be like, where's your list? You don't know what to do next. Nobody does. If you don't have it on a list somewhere, I don't care if it's on a chalkboard. I don't care if you write it on the back of your hand. This is the crap I got to do today. I'm for real. Yeah, everybody has to have a list. You have to be functional. It can be paper. It can be digital. It can be whatever. But you need to know your main tasks for your business that need to be done. Yeah, and even if it's you say, well, I can't, I get overwhelmed with the really big list because we all, the, the to-do list is never ending. This oh. is where the 15-minute hustle guide comes in, 15minutehustle.com, and you can download the ebook that has that wonderful um, download in it, that PDF. Kristen took it to Staples and got it laminated so she can write on it and, right, rewrite right. On it and rewrite on it and save a few thousand trees because she uses it every single day. I actually have my whiteboard that I do the exact same thing on, but mine's on a whiteboard because I need it big so it's in my face. I don't have a wall space and so I use that and I'm telling you, it wears itself out. Why? Because I'm one of those people that do get overwhelmed with a big, huge, long list because I feel like I'm never going to get something done and I'll end up 
you know, hem hon and being on Pinterest because I feel like I can't get anything done. So my four core things that I have to get done every day, go on this 15 minute hustle chart. And sometimes they're as easy as a five minute task, but I've got my four things that I have to get done today. They go on this chart, they go um, in line based on what I'm doing and I move on. Um, so make a list, make a priority list and make a list of all the things that need to be done in your business from big to small and then start putting them in some sort of priority order. Money making tasks first, miscellaneous stuff next. So don't put off bookkeeping because that's not necessarily money making, that's money taking. If you don't do your bookkeeping, you're going to lose money. So, so it is money making, ta money making tasks in the long run. You want to keep up on that. You want to make sure you're tracking, tracking your mileage. You want to make sure that you are paying attention and keeping all your duckies in a row. If you want to know more about that, we have a class for that. If you get concerned and overwhelmed by that whole prospect. Oh my gosh, that class saved my life. The, the, my sister's an accountant and she came, she was in our class with us and she came on as a guest audio and she gave us like this checklist for um what you can write off in your business and uh, keeping track of all of it and because of that last year i decided that this year i was going to be on top of my taxes talked about this last week and from that i wrote down and kept track of all the deductions and all the different things so this year my taxes are done filed and over already because i had that checklist because i had someone tell me exactly what to do i'm one of those like I need to know, I'm a step-by-step -step kind of person. I need to know what's next. I need to know the boxes that I can check off. So that's that, okay. So we're talking plan, collect, analyze, and decide. So we've talked about planning. That is making your list, prioritizing it based on money-making tasks first, and all the other stuff that still needs to be done, it's still on the list, it just goes down. So collecting data is next. We already kind of labored that, talking about facts and data. Um, collect the data. Before you make this decision, look at all the decisions on hand. Maybe you have A, B, and C, and you have to think about what's gonna be good, better, and best for your business. Collect the data, look at it, but don't labor over it. Pros and cons, but don't sit there and spin it over and over again and try and get, well, I don't have all the information. I need to go get more data, more data, more data, because then you're just gonna keep going down that rabbit trail. Get enough so that you can make conscious decision with the information that you have without overthinking it. Yeah, and I know that's a big deal. I don't want to brush over that lightly. I know a lot of you are probably sitting there going, oh, that's easy for you to say. Um, I have a <laughs> struggle with making decisions just like you do. And I have to say, what is the best thing for the business right now? What do I need to be doing right now to move my business in the right direction towards my core priority? What is the decision I need to make? now today not let me collect more yes you want to collect data to a point not overdoing it because you're afraid of something that's where you go back to the fear class last week and analyze that this is where um the over analysis the um there's a book that i just read i wish i could remember where he talks about underpants collecting which is basically when you just research 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 and you get more and more and more and you never actually take the step we see a lot of people do this who are starting amazon sellers who just are watching every YouTube video or in every Facebook group and are trying to get as much information because if they have more information, they'll be confident they can do it. I cannot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not the truth. And you know what? It, we speak from different points of view. Amy tends to be a perfectionist. I <laughs> tend, right under the bus. I tend to be one of those, yeah, let's just do it and see what happens. Um, but the more and more I actually analyze myself, the more I realize that I don't do that. I actually collect a lot of data up here and in my head and on paper and whatever. I don't just make decisions based on that. When we went to the trade show recently, um, in our particular niche, I was looking around at all the different new stuff that was out for 2017. And I noticed the trends right away. I was like, oh, that's the hot colors of the day. That's the hot colors for this. This particular size of something is going to be really hot this year and we're going to go in all in based on that because booth after booth vendor after vendor we're seeing the same things over and over again it is in fact a trend so i based on that based on experience you have experience somewhere you might not have experience with amazon but you don't need one more facebook group one more piece of information what you need to do is get your feet wet Go back and watch the fear class last week. It was free. It's on YouTube already. It's about fear. You're afraid of something. A failure, probably. But what if I do this Amazon thing and I put 500 bucks in it and I don't sell a single thing and I lose all my money? Well, it's better than regret. 
well, I wish I would have tried that, but I just got so caught up in all the Facebook groups and all the yeah buts and what ifs and how comes that I never did a thing. And now I'm still sitting here wondering, could I have had a multi-million dollar business? I'll, I'll share the same thing I did last week. And my first foray into wholesale was a total flop, <laughs> a $500 flop. And now I'm 90 for, now I'm 95% wholesale. If I had given up after that one failed attempt, I wouldn't, my business wouldn't be where it is today. Well, and Amy did what we're doing here. She planned that out. She ordered a wholesaler. She actually did some research and thought this thing is, I mean, I don't know how much research did you really do? Did you learn more about the research project? Cause there's, there's something there at the end of the failure. She looked and she said, what didn't I do right? I learned that certain things do not photograph well for sale on the web. Some things are better on a store shelf because they can touch it and feel it and understand what it does. And each and everything, whether you make a decision before you do something, sometimes a decision comes after you have a failed attempt at something. It'd be like, you can either decide, well, I'm never going to do that again, or you can decide, how can I learn from that? And so those are decisions just as much as deciding what products you're going to carry or what service you're going to offer, or where you're going to build your brick and mortar store. Yeah, you just have to, you know, and those things aren't happening willy nilly, you know, right now I'm in the process of researching a bigger space to operate out of because my mom and I are going to come back together sooner rather than later. And right now we're operating in two locations and that's working out. It's not going to work out when we're back in the space. I have 150 square feet in this little room and it works for now, but that ain't going to cut it when we come back together. Um, we'll be shipping every day plus some, whatever, and that's not the lifestyle I want. So I'm looking for a space that can help us do that. But in the meantime, I'm really looking at the fact that some of the space that we might need, we don't want a warehouse because it's hard to heat and cool in Michigan. And also we don't want to feel like we're working in a dungeon. So we're doing research right now in the analyze and research phase. I'm planning on what are the decisions I'm going to make because I have a lot of tough decisions to make with this. Do we buy retail space and have a front office area where we can sell product if we want to? That's an option. It gives us more options for wholesale if we actually open a tiny little brick and mortar thing and run our uh, online store out of the back end of it. Um, do we just look for office space and hope that they don't boot us out every time they hear our tape gun? Do we get warehouse space because it's easier to get delivers? All these decisions that we're trying to make that, and what's in my budget? What square footage can I afford? I don't want to commute. So I want something that's right around here. Unfortunately, space around my area is not cheap. So we're trying to figure out which how far away I want to actually be and how often I need to go there. So these are lots of decisions that I have to make too, scary ones, you know, that's a big commitment uh, to rent a space on a monthly basis and pay fees and um, pay rent and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, at some point we can't just be so overwhelmed that we're living with boxes next to our couch all the time and sitting on top of cardboard watching TV. So it's gotta be done. All of a sudden you have cardboard couches instead of regular couches. The struggle is real. Um, now, part of this is also when you are doing research, don't willy nilly it. Make sure that you have a plan for your research. Keep it all in one place. Whether you're a binder person, whether you're an Evernote person, whether you're a Google Docs person, whatever works for you, take that information and make sure you are keeping it in a place so you can come back and reference that. Whether you are going to, there, there are frequently times where you have to make similar decisions. It may be for a different product. It may be for different things, but where those places you were able to reference stuff previously, where you collected this data before is going to be helpful for you going forward for other decisions. Right. And so that brings us to our analyze. What do all the numbers say? What, where are people shopping? Where are your customers hanging out? What are they talking about? Where do they spend their money last year, last month, or last year? last May. Who knows? I mean, we're coming up on Easter. Um, we're coming up on some major holidays here. And whether you participate in Easter, or whether you don't, like 99% of Americans spend a lot of money on Easter. And so for whatever reasons, um, if you're missing that, you're missing out on customers for whatever reason. It is a celebration time for a lot of people. Um, everything from religious to Easter baskets to Easter egg hunts, candy, chocolate, whatever. I'll, I'll take all your chocolate donations. Okay, not all of them. Maybe just a little bite. Um, <laughs> But she's like, don't send her chocolate. No. I know. Um, happy I'm not there to protect her from the chocolate monster. Yeah, I actually, I can't even 
remember the last time I actually ate chocolate. That's pretty sad. No, that's um, a good thing. I know I'm trying to take care of myself, so I'm not eating a lot of sugar or whatever, but I still miss it. Anyway, um, making these decisions based on analyzing it and then just doing it. Also go back to the fear. This goes hand in hand. What is the worst that can happen? Once you've planned, once you've analyzed the data, you looked at something, you're getting ready to drop a thousand dollars on a brand new wholesaler, or you're at a retail store and you see this clearance and you really want to walk up to the manager and say, Hey, I will buy all of these for, you know, 10 extra percent off, you know, being ready and analyzing that this is, you know, looking at your data, looking at your scouting app, looking, whatever it is you're doing and saying, I have the confidence to do this because I did my homework. That's where good decision making comes in, doing the homework and base it on facts. Remember last week we talked about fear, facts, not feelings. It's not all about what you feel like and what your emotions are telling you. Yes, there's gut instincts and I want you to start trusting those, but those are based on previous experience of fact. So you have gut instincts based on facts, based on personal experience. So we want to make these decisions based on the facts that we've gathered and don't overgather gather enough and then just say, you know what, I'm going to stick with this. I did my homework. I did my analyzing. I know what's good and what's right for my business. This is what I'm willing to risk on it and make your decision. One of the most important questions you'll ask yourself in business is what's the worst that can happen? Chris and I put that back and forth at each other all of the time because we get stuck in our own heads and we need that well, what's the worst that could happen if you took this step forward in your business? I would not have written my book, wow, two years ago at this point, if I hadn't heard, had her saying, what's the worst that could happen for, if you put a book out there? Nobody could buy it. Okay, so I would have done three months worth of work for nobody to buy my book. Well, that didn't happen. So I get to get the benefits of having written a book, which actually became the basis of a product we created. It's, you know, it just, step by step by step ask yourself that question and let me, and be honest and we're going to be honest what is the worst that can happen the worst thing doesn't always happen but sometimes crappy stuff does happen let me tell you a couple weeks back i've been wanting to hire someone to come and help me and work for me and i put an ad out there and i hired someone and she came and she was amazing and guess what last week she didn't show she just did not show up. I texted her and said, hey, I was expecting you today. What happened? Are you okay? Whatever. Never answered me. I tried calling. She never answered. So she, I mean, all kinds of what ifs and yeah buts are in my head already about why didn't she come? What is she this? What is that? What is that? All stuff. And I have to say, okay, that's not the worst that could happen. You know, it sucks. It really does. Because now I have to go back to the drawing board and find somebody else. And that's fine. I have to go back to the, you know, vetting process and calling some other people. I thought she was the one. She was great. We had a great time. We talked to each other. She was helpful. She just didn't show. And that's just life. So should I just not move forward with hiring somebody else because the first situation went bad? Uh, no, maybe I will do somebody on a trial basis and say, hey, if this works out next time, then come and not always jump in. I'm learning from the experience of hiring strangers, which is interesting. But, you know, it's just, things happen. It's not the worst thing that could happen. I mean, I, I actually, she did something for me that even if I don't ever see another person hired again, she got me organized. So for the eight hours that she spent at my house and did what she did, I, I paid for that. And now I have this amazing, awesome color coded spreadsheet that I didn't have before she came. So I got some good benefit out of it and I don't have somebody regular at the moment, but because of that, I did get something good out of it. I choose to look at that. I don't choose to sit here and go, oh, I made a bad decision. I hired the wrong person, didn't work out. Um, I guess I just, I'm not good at hiring and I think I'll throw in the towel. Nah, I still need help. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. And we're like, that is our, one of our major goals for this year is outsourcing because it's what it will allow us to grow our businesses. And it is not, always an easy process it you know if you're hiring employees to work in your brick and mortar store if you're hiring employees to work in your warehouse to hum to do your shipping to do your bookkeeping if you're hiring an accountant all those things take analysis and understanding to be able to make that decision do the pros and cons do the trial and error take one step forward and you might go back to the drawing board again but you took a step and you learned something that you wouldn't have learned if you hadn't taken the step right now, what about no clear right answer? So you're analyzing a couple of things. You've got option A, you've got option B. There's no clear cut right answer, good decisions. All the options are awesome options. Then what do you do? 
um, you've got to just do it. I'm going to, you know, if Nike, just do it. Just take a step forward because think about it, unless it is very time sensitive and you only have 500 bucks and you can only buy A or B and you have to just go all in and pick one and there'll never be an option again, which what are the chances of that really happening? It doesn't usually happen. So if it's all that, then, you know, you could always think I can come back to decision B if I make decision A and it isn't the right one. Same thing with me. I've got 10 different people from my ad that I can contact because um, this other lady didn't work out. It's okay. I mean, um, I have to just contact the other people. So it's, it's, you, I have, it wasn't the worst decision, but if all the options are good, you've got to just make that. Now, how do you do that? You've got to put a deadline on yourself. Okay, so we don't want to willy nilly just, you know, I'm going to take forever analysis paralysis and get all caught up in that fear. You're going to get caught up in that fear because you're fear, you're fearful you're going to make the wrong choice. That's definitely all of us struggle with that as entrepreneurs, because we take the heat if we screw up. That's the reality. We, we do it too. Amy just talked about her, you know, $500 wholesale flop. And I just had a flop with hiring someone that I brought into my house after calling her and reading her resume and all that kind of stuff. Thought I made a really great decision and it was great. I still have no idea what happened, but um, I can't just hang my head and say, I made a bad decision. I'm screwing up. I have to put a deadline on myself and keep moving forward. The, de the deadline is what's going to help you stop going in circles, stop going down rabbit trails, stop collecting information, say, I need to make a decision by this date. When you get a job offer, when you get um, a loan offer, when you get things like that, they have timelines on them for a reason. So you have to sit down and go through the pros and cons and say, okay, I have this amount of time to make this decision to make the best decision for me in the time I'm allotted. So what we're asking you to do is give yourself that timeline when one isn't put in place for you. Right. You don't want to circle that, uh, you know, in, in the Bible it talks about, um, you know, different people, you know, in the Old Testament where they're, they're wandering around the desert for like 40 years. They had to wander around. They have to circle the mountain one more time and walk around and around. And, you know, it's just like in hopes of finding the better answer when literally all you're doing is walking around in a circle. Walking around in a circle and hopes that the landscaping is going to all of a sudden change isn't going to change. You have to step outside of the circle and just make the choice. Make the choice based on the facts and the data, based on your, not just that, but your gut instincts, not on feelings, not on fear, not about what if, whatever, and put yourself a timestamp. Say, by the end of today, I am going to choose A or B at the end. At the end of this hour, I'm going to choose A or B, and I'm just going to go with it. What's the worst that can happen? Write that down if you have to. This is the worst that can happen. What's the best that can happen? What's the best happen is that I paid someone a day's wage to set up a wonderful, amazing spreadsheet for me. And she never came back. She never showed. She probably didn't like my curly hair, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What it matters is, is that I got something from that. So it wasn't, you know, that's the, one of the good things that could happen. I didn't get a regular employee, but I got a great spreadsheet. So good for me. So think about what pros and cons, good and bad, and then just make a choice because in the end of the day, you're going to circle that mountain one more time. And you're just going to be a day farther away from your core priority. What is that core priority? What is that thing, that item, that freedom, that something that you want? Move towards it. You're not going to get there if you keep circling the mountain. So just stop, put yourself a timestamp on it, and then take that leap of faith. Take that step forward because what's the worst that can really happen? I, I, I love this question because it, I, I go back to this on a daily basis because sometimes I go, I'll be going through wholesale catalogs and I'm like, well, will it really sell? The data looks right, but it's a new product and I'm not totally sure. I've brought how many new products to the table now and I can go and sit and be like, okay, I'm going to trust my instinct on this and I'm going to go for it. What's the worst that can happen? That I don't sell. All right, been there, done that. I'm not, <laughs> it is what it is. Now I've learned to not buy as much of something at a time. Um, so I'm going to be a little more cautious in my venturing into new waters, but I'm still going to do it. Now, we've set a deadline. We're going to talk about the if-then. 
Okay, so these are some quick, easy decisions. These are something that it's like training your muscles. Like if you do bicep curls every single day, you can up your limit on, you know, you do 10 pound weights and you do 15 pound weights. And if you're practicing that every single day, it's gonna get faster and easier and you're gonna have to up your game. So we're gonna give you a couple of really quick tips here at the end of how to make decisions that are quick and easy and based on certain things. So when you're talking about the if then type statement, if something is more predictable, then you can set a guideline line for it. So, I mean, I put this example here in the notes. If my mother-in-law criticizes me twice during her stay, then I'm going to bring it up. So you have something in mind, you've planned, you've thought through, this is something that happens all the time, and I'm going to need to make a decision about it. I can choose to not say anything, or I can say, if I can say, okay, I'll let it go once. If she does it twice, I'm going to bring it up and tell her how rude she is. No, uh, but you know, those types of things. If I am going to source product then I will ship it within 24 hours. Put guidelines on yourself with if and then, because you have the fun stuff, but then you actually have to do the task. And it makes the decision making so much easier if you get yourself into a habit of making guidelines for yourself. If I ship all the stuff in my house by 12 o'clock, I can spend the rest of the afternoon sourcing. That's one that Kristen and I both use on a regular basis. Um, because it's that that motivation to get through. And we're not saying do a sloppy job getting through because we all know how well that goes. I, we learned that one as kids. Like you do the dish, a sloppy job doing the dishes, you're going to end up doing them twice. Absolutely. So put it through the first time, do it the right way the first time, but give yourself that goal. I know that the when I have something I'm looking forward to, like sourcing, like whatever it is, I'm more apt to get it done, focus on it, boom, I can do this. Whereas if I don't have that looming out there, then I tend to be like, oh, I'll check Seller Central again. Oh, I'll check YouTube again. Oh, I'll collect all this non-necessary data. It's like my underwear collection. Like I'm collecting information that's not helping me make decisions. I'm collecting data just because it makes me feel good. Right. So, you know, thinking about the if then. So set up yourself some guidelines. Okay. Write them down on your, hopefully you guys got your download already. If not, mommyincome.com slash decision and get tonight's download so that you can um, write some of these things down yourself. So that you've got your if then. Set up predictable guidelines. And the next one, and last and final one is really just routine and habit. If you, if you struggle with decision making on a regular basis, both big and small, you're sitting in front of a, a menu at, you know, your favorite restaurant, everything sounds good and, you know, this looks good and you're, you're swayed by all kinds of different choices or whatever. If you have some guidelines and decisions in mind ahead of time, then that won't be so hard. I have a friend who is so good at this. I swear she doesn't even have to look at the menu. She is so good at planning her meals and knowing what she's going to eat that she doesn't really even have to look at the menu. She looks at it ahead of time or she goes to one of our favorite restaurants. We go um, girls night every other week or so and we um, meet together and she like already knows what she's gonna order. She's not swayed by, oh, the French fries smell amazing. She's like, nope, I know what I'm getting, whatever. And it's just amazing how she makes those decisions. So routine and habit, make rules and habits and routines to follow. Like always have eggs for breakfast. So if you go out for breakfast, you're not tempted by pancakes because your rule of thumb is always have eggs for breakfast. You know you need the protein, you know we need it for a stable breakfast, you know, and it just makes it easier to make some decisions or routine and habit for your business. So that was life things. I mean, you can tell where I struggle, huh? Um, but how about um, those businesses? Always do shipments first always check customer relations first before you do anything else. And then there's not these, oh, well, what am I going to do today? It's kind of willy nilly. It's kind of whatever I want to do. How, put routines and habits in place so that you don't have to feel like every single decision you make is like make or break you decisions. So CEOs who have a lot of decisions to make every single day, they start limiting their decisions by setting routines and habits. They eat the same thing for breakfast. Steve Jobs notoriously wore the same style of jeans and the same black turtleneck every single day because it was one decision he didn't have to think about. He got up, he put the same suit of armor on every single day and he didn't have to think about it. So much easier to eliminate some of those choices, you know? And you know, we all struggle with that. The more choices we have, the more, and as an entrepreneur, this is a big deal. This is why we're doing an hour show on this because we're faced with decisions all the time. 
we can choose to go out to lunch with the friends or we can choose to say, no, I've got a shipment I've got to do. I need to pour into my business. I need to call this wholesaler. I need to go RA shopping. I need to peel stickers. I need to do whatever it is I need to do. So saying no to that if then and the routines and the habits and taking the fear out. We already posted a link about last week's show about overcoming fear so that you can push forward and make decisions. We're paralyzed by fear sometimes. We're so afraid of that if then, yeah, but what if? You know, a life lived without regret is so much better. One more day of not doing something because you're afraid of something. What, where's that going to get you? Only to say, oh, maybe tomorrow because today I'm just so afraid to do that. Um, you know, live life, move towards that core priority and go get what you want and do it with, you're not going to be able to do that with fear. You're going to have to be able to let go and take that leap of faith. And, you know, it's not, I pro I'm not going to promise you sunshines and rainbows. It's not always all going to work out the way you want it to. But if you learn from it and you start setting up habits and routines of decision-making and overcoming fear, you're going to be so far ahead of the game. Um, I just, I can't tell you how many times in my life where there's people or things or circumstances says you can't, you won't, it's impossible. It's not going to be this. It's like, we'll see, you know, I'm not one of those conquer the world kind of people, but I take baby steps towards what I want. I have baby steps towards someone told me one time after my house was foreclosed on because my husband got hurt from work. You'll never own a house again, or it'll be 10 or 15 years. You're just going to have to rent. It's going to be all that. No, that didn't happen because I did everything that I could to not make that happen. And I saved money and I bought a house with my Amazon income. Another thing people told me would never take off and never work. It's always just gonna be this little side hobby hustle. Yeah, right, eat my dust now. <laughs> it's all about having a certain mindset. And decision-making in a lot of ways is about your mindset. The more positive you are going into a decision, and not all decisions are easy. I don't want to say that. I don't want to put that out there. But going into something with a, okay, what's the best that can happen out of this scenario? You could be in a not great decision-making process, place, whatever. Come into it with a positive attitude and you're going to go further and be able to make better decisions in the long run than you are if you come in with a well, um, this just this decision just sucks. Well, who wants to make a decision that sucks? Nobody does. So, look at it from a different put it put a different lens on it. Absolutely. So you guys got everything you need, right? You got your download, mommyincome.com/decision. I want you guys to download that piece of paper, and I want you to write it down. And write it down and then come to the Facebook group and talk to us about it. Say, hey, I mean, we like to hear from you guys. We like to know that sometimes we're not just shooting the breeze out here all by ourselves. <laughs> you know, everybody else has got great, you know, decision-making skills and they're wondering why they sat here for an hour. Um, you know, this is tough stuff. And every day, if you're a mom, if you're a wife, if you're a caregiver for an elderly parent, you got to make tough choices every single day. My mom had to make a tough choice to move out of the city. Now she's always been a city girl and drive and move three hours up north to take care of my sick father. Um, you know, that was that an easy choice to make to move away from all the girls and the grandkids and everything? No, but she made the right choice for her. She realized what's the worst that can happen? What's the best that can happen? And she just made a commitment. You know, and if you're a person of faith and you believe in God and have faith, um, also base your decisions based on what God would want you to do. That's what I always filter through and say, okay, what's my core priority is following after him and how am I going to make decisions that are going to benefit my family, benefit my faith, benefit my business. We, all, we want all those things. So making the right decisions based on that is a great way. So thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Entrepreneur on a Dime. We love having you guys here. We love your feedback. We love um, to hear from you and your questions and all that. You can come to the Facebook group. Here is your code word for the evening. It's decision. So go to mommyincome.com slash join us. Give us your code word. We'd love to have you in there. It's a private Facebook group. You can ask all ask you can ask all your questions in there and we'd be happy to answer them. Both entrepreneurs, Amazon sellers, everybody, you're all welcome to come in and hang out with us.